Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Doab. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about, about you. Welcome to your battle experience. I want to welcome us into the presence of the Lord Church today for as many joining us online. And for as many of us who are in the presence of the Lord today, I want you to know that in His presence there is fullness of joy. And at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Welcome to Bethel Experience. And this morning, in the spirit of the month of divine resurrection, I want to talk about a phrase that we have used several times, but I want you to pay attention because this particular phrase, I want you to have a new meaning to it today. And it's the word crucified with Christ. Let's read the scripture, Galatians chapter 2, from verse 15 to verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, from verse 15 to verse 20, crucified with Christ. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by what? By what? Faith of who? By the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by what? By that same faith of who? Not your own faith, but by the faith of who? Of Christ. And not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinner, is there for Christ the minister of sin? The scripture says, God forbid. But if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I may live unto God. Is that a contradiction? That I, through the law, am dead to the law, but that I may live unto who? Unto God. Verse 20, which will be the last one. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Not the same person again. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. May the Lord bless the reading. And the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Crucified with Christ. Brethren, looking at the season that we are in, there are a lot of preparation towards Easter. Easter eggs, right? Easter bunny. <laughs> Praise God. But people, even including Christians, we have forgotten that we are still on a journey. And in the Christian journey, in the Christian race, each and every one of us must live for Christ. Is it when we get to heaven? 
where? Here on earth. Hallelujah. And when we're not talking of living for Christ, we need to understand that the life that we have to now live for Christ, how must that life reflect the person we are living for? Praise God. If you go back to our text from verse 16, It says, a man is not justified by the works of the law. Now, what is the law? What is the law? Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Romans chapter 7, verse 4. The Bible says in Romans 7, 4, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the law. By what? By the body of Christ. When a man is dead to something, he's not alive to it, right? When you are dead to something, that means you will not have feelings for that thing again. You will not have any emotion for that thing again. In fact, you will be oblivious to whatever it is that you are supposed to be dead to, correct? So, when we're talking about the law, what is the law? Praise God. What is the law? When Paul was restating this, uh, in that verse 16 for us, it talks about the fact that we're not justified by the works of the law. So, the question is this, what is the works of the law? The law of Moses Thou must not kill. Thou must not have any other God beside me. Amen. Remember your God. Make sure you serve him. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. There are different ordinances in the law. And if we have to now follow the law. Romans chapter 3 verse 19. You want to be a student of the law. You want to live by the order of the law. He says, no, now we know that the things, whatsoever things the law said. Who does he say it to? He says, he said it to them that are under the law. The question is this, beloved. Are you under the law? Hello, church. Are you under the law? Some of us are not sure. I said, are you under the law? No. But what is the law? Is it not the scripture? Hallelujah. You see, it says we cannot build again the things that Christ has come to destroy. He has come to destroy the works of the law. Do you know that the law is a schoolmaster? A tax master? No wonder Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You are telling the people of God, this is what you need to do. But you yourself, you are not doing it. Everything that you have to do by yourself, in order to be righteous, is the law. Amen. In order to please God, in order to satisfy God, in order to be right with God, that you have to do in your own power, by your own effort, is the law. Praise God. You cannot live for Christ if you are not dead to the law. You cannot be a Christian, identify as a child of God, if you are still under the law. Hallelujah. Whatsoever things that the law say, the law is saying it to those who are captives of the law. In the same, uh, the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 4. 
Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Christ is who? Hello, church. Who is Christ? Christ is the end of the law. For who? For everyone? Let's break it down. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Are you a believer? Yes. Are you under the law? No. So now we get the point now. If you are in Christ, if any man is in Christ, he is who? Amen. What are the old things that must pass away? Everything including the law. Praise God. We're talking about the resurrection month. The coming of Christ into this world to die for you and for me on the cross. He paid the ultimate price. And we can see that the law will always lead to death. And so Jesus has to fulfill the law in order for us not to be under the law anymore. He says, I have come that you may have life. And have that life. How? For Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believe. The question is this. Do you believe? Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. We're talking about crucified with Christ. And I'll break it down. It says, to redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of who? Of the sons. And so, for everyone that is under the law, Christ came. Paid the price in order to redeem us, the price of redemption. So that we will no longer be under the law. And let me ask that question again. Are you crucified with Christ? Now, what does that even mean? What does it mean? Are you crucified with Christ? Let me ask this other question again. Most of us will be familiar with this. Are you born again? Are you what? Born again. Praise God. And I'm sure for most of us, the answer will be yes. Praise God. But if I also ask again, are you dead to sin and the law? No, let me ask us. Are you dead to sin and the law? Most of us also agree that the answer is what? It's yes. But when you are saying you are dead to sin and the law, and we're saying we must be crucified with Christ, what does it mean? Let's go back to that Galatians. What that means, let's start from verse uh, 18, Galatians 2. It says, if I build again the things which have been destroyed, which I destroy, I make myself who? How can you build again the things which have been destroyed? If you have been redeemed, if you have given your life to Christ, and you now willingly surrendered yourself again under the law, you are building again the things that Christ has demolished, the barrier between us and God. Verse 19. I don't want you to build again the things that has been destroyed. He said, because for I, through the law, I am dead to the law. How can you be dead to the law? He said that I might not live unto God. But what does it mean to be dead to the law? That means you have been crucified with Christ. Now, when we talk about crucifixion, the physical 
cross that we can visualize that Christ was nailed on. Praise God. The physical cross. It's a very painful one. Amen. How many of us have watched the, uh, the, the film, The Passion of Christ? Please, I will encourage you to go and watch it again. Because it will bring back certain memories. Forget about the fact that it's uh, an act. But no, it happened real life to someone else. Who paid the price. So that you will no longer be under the law. He was beaten, he was scourged, and he was crucified. And so if we are now asking you, we are asking ourselves, are you really crucified with Christ? What does he mean? What does he mean? That means you are no longer under the penalty of the law. Amen. Amen. The punishment that is supposed to to come to you because you break the law. You are no longer under that penalty because someone else has paid the price. Amen. I'm sure we know it. Uh, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of what? Is what? And someone is saying, I don't want you to die. So I am going to stand in your spot, in your position, in your stead. And I will take away the punishment of sin. So, church, we're in the season that we need to reflect more. Not just about the cross and the price that Christ paid. But much more about ourselves to look inward. This price was paid by someone. And so I need to begin to live in that consciousness that I am now crucified with him. I am no longer under the penalty of the law of sin. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. Says my little children. These things I write unto you, that you don't do what? Don't commit sin anymore. Why? Because you have been crucified with... When you are crucified with Christ, you are not alive again to commit sin. Praise God. So don't make it a practice to willfully sin. In our continue, he said, but if any man sin, peradventure, you made a mistake. If any man sin, we have an advocate. We have a lawyer. We have someone who will stand in our place with the Father, Jesus Christ. The who? The righteous. And so, when you have been crucified with him, he's the one that will take your place. And said on behalf of this, your son, your daughter, every of his sins has been wiped away. And when God will look at you, he will only see the righteousness of his son in your life. Are we together, church? And so stop looking at yourself as the chief sinner. Stop looking at yourself as though, Pastor, you don't know my past. He says that past has been blotted out, removed completely by the blood of Jesus. And so let me ask you again are you crucified with Christ? Because if you are, what that means is you are no longer under the penalty of sin. Let's read uh, in NLT our text again, verse 19 of uh, Galatians 2, 19. Let's read it in New Living Translation. He said, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. 
So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for who? Who are you living for? Stop trying to meet all the, because you cannot in your own strength, in your own ability, in your own power. No man can fulfill the requirement of the law. Go and ask the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They are still trying till today. Right? You see some of them, the way they put on their religious attire. If that alone satisfies sin, then there should be no sinner in the world. But that in itself, without Christ, is still nothing. Amen. So when we say you have been crucified with Christ, verse 20, you see, we're talking of your own self. He said, my old self. Woo! The one who you used to be has been crucified with Christ. And so it is no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Amen. Who is in you? So let's break it down again. After being dead to the law, you are now alive unto who? So live by the faith of Christ. Not by your own faith. Not by your own works. Because by the works of our own hand, we cannot please God. Praise the Lord. There's something that I want to emphasize this morning, beloved. And this is for someone. In the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Was wounded. It was, let's go back to KJV now. Was wounded for transgression. Bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes beloved what I want you to know is that when you are crucified with Christ your sickness your shame your pain your infirmity is what has been nailed to the cross and you are no longer supposed to carry them to identify with them. You are no longer supposed to live under the law anymore. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 13. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 13. When we were dead in sin, And the uncircumcision of the flesh, he had quickened us together with him. When we were crucified with him in the flesh, we did not remain dead in the physical. It was the flesh that was crucified. He not quickened us. We were revived. We were brought back to life together with him. Having all our trespasses forgiven, blotted out, erased, they did not exist anymore. And so stop looking at your old self because there is no more record. Look at verse 14. Amen. It, they have been blotted out, every and written of ordinances that was written against. You, that was contrary, Jesus took them out of the way, nailing them to the cross. Nailing them to the cross. They don't exist anymore. 
Praise God. And that's why I want us to have a, a new perception, a new understanding. Let's go back to that test again. Galatians 5, 20 now. He says, I'm not crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm alive. How do I live for Christ if I've been crucified? Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet yeah, not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself a ransom for me. How do I live by the faith of that Son of God? That means you must live in health. Perfect health. Third John, chapter 1, verse 2. We shall above all things that you will prosper. Amen. And be in health. Third John. Prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. The life that you live in Christ must be a life of perfect health. That means sickness is not allowed anymore. It's not permitted because you are no longer under the law. The life that you now live in the flesh must be lived in prosperity and in health. In prosperity and in wealth. In the book of Psalm 92, from verse 12, it says that the righteous, you will do what? Flourish like the palm tree. You will grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They that be planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. Woo! Where? Will flourish in the courts of our God. The life that you now live in the flesh must be living out. Because that life is in Christ. Must be lived in prosperity. Must also be lived in peace. Jesus, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Say, be at peace with how many men? All oh, men. All men, without which no man can see the law. When you have been crucified with Christ, you must live in peace at all times. Philippians 4, 7. See, the peace that we are talking about can only come from knowing the prince of peace. He says, and that peace of God, which is in you, through Christ Jesus, that peace pass all understanding. It is that peace that will keep your hearts and mind all the time, even when there are storms, even when there are fire, even when there is what? Chaos. The peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will establish your heart. Why? Because you have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you are living your life. But that life, you are living it by the faith of the Son of God. Not minding what you see. Praise God. Are you crucified with Christ? Christ is the reason for this season. He is the one who has given us reasons to be hopeful, to be alive. The life that I live in the flesh, how must I live it? In health, in wealth, in peace. And it must be lived to serve. The life that I live must be lived to serve the Lord. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, Joshua declared, he says, as for me, Amen. And my house. There is no argument. We will serve 
the Lord. Why? Because the life that I'm living, I have to live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself a ransom for me. Crucified with Christ. Are you? And so if you are crucified with Christ, then you must live to serve him. Exodus 23, verse 25, as I round up. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. It says, when you live that life to serve God, what will, he have, what will happen to you? When you serve the Lord your God, it will bless your bread, it will bless your water. It will take sicknesses away from you. Are you crucified with Christ? Every time I remember what Jesus told uh, Mary and Martha in John chapter 11, verse 25, when we're complaining, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> Jesus told her, ah, I am the resurrection and the life. All you need to do is what? Believe. He that believeth in me, though he were yet dead, yet shall do what? Shall do what? The question I want to throw to us, church, is this. Are there things that has become dead in your life? The one who is the resurrection and life says, even those things may be dead, but they will do what? They will do what? They will do you believe that? Yes. All he wants you to do is to believe. Because he's the one that will give life to the good things. Amen. That has been stolen. That has been taken away from you. He will give them life. He will give them life. Go back to verse 23 of that John. Jesus is still in the business. John eleven twenty three, 23. He's still in the business of giving life. And this is the word of the Lord to someone. Jesus told Martha, your brother shall rise again. And so the Lord said I should tell someone. Whatever represents brother in your life, is it your health, is it your career, is it your finances, the life of your children, they shall rise again. Amen. They shall rise again. Amen. Your health will rise again. Amen. Your career will rise again. Amen. Your finances will rise again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's rise up. And I want you to take a word of prayer. Are you crucified with Christ? Are you crucified with Christ? What kind of life are you living? Because if you are crucified with Christ, you cannot live for yourself again. You cannot live by yourself again. You cannot live to please yourself again. If you are crucified with Christ, your life must be lived to please God, the one who loved you and gave himself a ransom for you. Please, I want you to go ahead and pray for yourself. Examine your own life. Have you even given your life to Christ? Are you a Christian? If you are not, you cannot live for him. Your own prayer will be, Lord Jesus, come into my life today. I don't want to live for myself and by myself again. I want to live for you. Come into my life. Come in today and save my soul. And if you have given your life to Christ, but you have not been living for Christ, why don't you ask him for that grace? To begin to live for him. In Jesus' name, we are praying. One more prayer point. Jesus told 
your brother shall rise again. Is there anything in your life that has died? In this resurrection season, whatever represents brother in your life, it could literally be your brother or your sister or your siblings, your career, your business, whatever represents brother that has died. The word of the Lord is that they shall rise again. Why don't you pray and talk to the Lord and ask him because he is the resurrection and the life. Everything that has died in your business, whatever has become dead in your ministry, in your womb, in your finances, in your marriage, receive life. Mm. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I want to thank you for today. The privilege and the opportunity to be reminded again and again of that work of perfection, of completion that Christ did on our behalf on the cross. That we are no longer under the law. We are no longer under the law as a schoolmaster. We have received grace. We have received salvation through the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are a brand new person, a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And so I ask Lord for that grace for every of my era. The grace to live for Christ. Grant unto us in Jesus' name. The grace to be dead to sin, to the works of the flesh, to the works of the law, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. The grace to live the life that you have given us in Christ. To live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself a ransom for us. Grant us that grace in the name of Jesus. And I ask once again, and there are things that has become dead in our life. Precious and great promises that you have for us that has died. Dreams, aspirations, and hopes of a better tomorrow that have died. In every career, in every finances, in every marriage, in every home, in every business. Whatever it is that you have ordained for us, great and precious promises that have died, let them receive life. Amen. Let them rise again. Amen. Let them rise again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord. We appreciate and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we are free. And amen. Why don't you celebrate the Lord? Celebrate Him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your battle experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Our services hold every Sunday at 10 a.m. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.